I'm uh, Brad Bove. I'm uh, uh, one of the five behavioral neurologists at uh, Mayo Clinic Rochester. There are, are several types of PET scans. Uh, the main one that's used in neurologic practice is a fluorodeoxyglucose or FDG uh, PET, uh, but we usually just call it a PET scan. Uh, PET scan is used to look at metabolic activity in the brain. Um, in a standard workout for uh, patients with cognitive problems, uh, we'll typically do either a CAT scan or an MRI scan of the brain. Um, when the scans are relatively normal, you'd like some other objective evidence of something neurologically uh, based. So in that setting, a PET scan can be uh, very helpful. As we narrow things down from a CT or MRI scan, blood tests, urine tests, uh, if we're still not sure what's causing the symptoms, that's when a PET scan can be uh, helpful. Frontotemporal degeneration, um, uh, uh, PET scanning is very important because the diagnosis of frontotemporal uh, dementia or frontotemporal degeneration is not easy, and a PET scan is really critical to establish a diagnosis. A patient uh, comes into the Charlton area, uh, then has the uh, tracer, which is the medicine that's uh, injected intravenously, and then uh, within hours of that, then the person lays down on a table that's then moved uh, into this donut of a scanner. Uh, uh, the, the scan itself takes about a half hour to an hour. Uh, the, the medicine that is uh, injected intra, uh, intravenously, it's a radio tracer, so it has a minute amount of uh, radioactive material. Uh, that's what binds to the brain, the metabolic uh, areas, and that radioactivity is what the scanner actually picks up. Uh, but that fades over hours, so it's gone. There have not been any significant harmful effects that have been documented with PET scanning. No eating for about four hours prior um, uh, to the scan, um, and, uh, but it's um, less involved than an MRI scan. There's no knocking, so uh, most people don't, uh, aren't bothered by any uh, noise aspect. Uh, but then uh, medicine is injected, so um, uh, a little bit of discomfort just with uh, uh, an intravenous uh, injection. Uh, but otherwise, it's a, a very benign test. Uh, a, a nuclear medicine radiologist formally reviews the results, and then the neurologist reviews the results uh, in the office on the computer uh, with the patient and family. Uh, we often will print uh, the uh, images out. But these are color images, uh, kind of a 3D view of the brain. Uh, so we print these out in color and then share uh, the results with the patient. Uh, efficiency with which uh, this uh, goes on from ordering, usually the test can be done within 24 hours and then uh, results uh, uh, back within hours after completion, so it's uh, typically done quickly. This is the latest technology for uh, doing the PET scanning itself and uh, perhaps even more importantly, interpreting the data. So having the software uh, to uh, um, appreciate the nuances of mildness. Uh, again, the older two-dimensional grayscale images were, um, unless things were very abnormal, they were hard to detect. So the ability to do uh, this type of PET scanning at Mayo Clinic provides uh, an uh, enormous uh, additional uh, information that uh, many other institutions don't have. Uh, again, because it's uh, three-dimensional, it's color, we can print this out, share this with patients, and then share with uh, local physicians, uh, it's clearly uh, added um, uh, as opposed to uh, usual routine. This shows uh, uh, the color coding of the patient's metabolic activity, looking at the left side, right side, front, back, top, bottom, so different angles. And then this is the patient's data compared to the normative base. And so this information is actually easier to interpret than the patient's own data because it's being compared to normals. And then this is numerical information uh, if the clinician wants quantitative data. Um, and then this pattern uh, down here provides diagnostic relevance. In this particular patient, you can see a yellow and green in the frontal, temporal, parietal regions, sparing the sensory motor strip, and then involvement of the posterior cingulate and this is the typical pattern of Alzheimer's disease. So this uh, patient had a very normal looking MRI scan, but did have cognitive problems. And so uh, uh, this uh, uh, essentially cinched the uh, diagnosis. We will be using this in the pre-symptomatic uh, phase, and we want to be in the uh, era of prevention. So can we identify pre-symptomatic disease, intervene, 
and prevent or delay the onset, and uh, PET scanning is going to be critical for that.